My DMs have been full of this video and you're all demanding an explanation. All right, first of all, there's nothing to suggest that either of these techniques are particularly favoured in South Korea or China. The one on the left is the standard long multiplication method that many of us know and loathe, but I'm guessing it's the one on the right that you're interested in. Is it real? Can we trust it? Is it better than long multiplication? Yes, yes, and let's find out. There are three simple steps to this technique, like a cha-cha-cha. Step one, how far are the numbers from 100? 97 is three less than 100, 94 is six less than 100. Step two, take away one difference from the other number. It doesn't matter which one because they'll both give us the same answer, either 97 minus six or 94 minus three. Either way, we'll get 91, and that's the first part of our answer. Step three, multiply the differences. We can ignore the minus signs now, three times six is 18. That's it. 97 times 94 is 9,118. Cha-cha-ching, am I right? Let's try another one. 103 times 104. Step one, how far from 100? 103 is three more than 100. 104 is four more than 100. Step two, this time we're gonna add one difference to the other number. That's why we're including the plus and minus signs to remind us whether we add or subtract. Again, it doesn't matter which way around we do it. 103 plus four or 104 plus three both give us 107. Step three, multiply the differences. Four times three is 12. Optional step four, feel pretty smug about how quickly we just did that big multiplication. Now, one thing we need to be careful of is that we need a two digit answer for step three. So if we've got 98 times 99, that's two less and one less than 100, then 99 minus two or 98 minus one gives 97. Now, when we multiply our differences, two times one is gonna give two, but we need two digits here, so we write zero two. So given that this method is so much quicker than long multiplication, why weren't we taught it at school? Well, techniques like this are often dismissed as silly tricks that don't always work, but that's slander or libel if they wrote it down. It does always work. It just doesn't always make the multiplication easier. The further our numbers are away from 100, the harder it gets, but that's no different to any other method. Sometimes a door handle allows you to enter a new room of possibilities, and sometimes it gets caught on your clothes and ruins your whole day. Furthermore, Your Honour, not only is it mathematically sound, no, beautiful, I'll put the algebraic proof in the caption, but compared to the unintuitive way many of us learn long multiplication, an exploration into this technique can be really helpful in understanding the concept. Let me show you. We can represent our multiplication by a rectangle with area 97 by 94. Now, I think we can all agree this multiplication would be objectively better if one of the numbers were 100. Well, let's borrow from Peter to give to Paul. No one's looking. We'd need three more to turn 97 into 100. So let's take it from the 94. We'll chop off a strip of width three, leaving 91 behind. Now, if we swivel this bit round here, the top length becomes 100. Notice what we did there? we found the difference between 97 and 100 and we took that away from 94 just like in the mathematic technique. Now we've got this hangy bit down here. I believe that's the technical term for it. How long is it? Well, up to here is 91 and in total it's 97. So the hangy bit has a length of six and a width of three. Let's chop it off. Look what we've done. We've turned a gnarly looking multiplication into two nicer ones that give the same answer. 100 times 91, which is 9,100, and three times six, which is 18. In total, that's 9,118. So this technique may not be the best pick in every situation, but it will still help us to calculate like an absolute boss for hundreds of multiplications. And exploring it will uncover the secret behind most of our multiplication algorithms, turning an unfriendly calculation into friendlier ones. In everyday life, we're so used to having to pick a side, pick a team, pick a favorite. But a lot of the time when we have to pick one thing to the exclusion of all others, we miss out on lots of good stuff. Luckily, that's not the case with maths. We don't need to be team long multiplication or team mathematic technique. One isn't better than the other. They've both got their strengths and limitations, just like a door handle. If we wanna develop real skill, long multiplication probably shouldn't be the first technique we learn, and it certainly shouldn't be the only. But if we can twist, slide, swing, and cha-cha, 
Well, then we can dance. Now, if you want a bit more math and magic in your life, check out our fantastic books, courses, and resources on our website at summersofanarchy.com. They'll help you level up your maths game the Summers of Anarchy way.